Hi, my name is Michael Trout, and I'm going to do a talk here about the Open Corp and trying to bring it into your paradigm because this is a new paradigm, and I want you to understand it. I want you to support it, and I want you to get behind it. And it's you know, and we're trying to push it out. Foundups, and we're behind the Open Startup. And Open Startups become Open Corps. It's our basically our highly scalable method of getting a lot of Open Corps out there that are going to provide the change that we all want. Now. I'm probably no different than you. We worry about the future. Here I am with my two boys, Tommy and Mikey. And ultimately, if we don't make the changes, they don't have a future. This might as well be their future. Okay, right? Um, and not only that, everyone else. I mean, the, 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 the gap between the haves and have not is so great now, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can think of this as a couple entrepreneurs bootstrapping their way up, you know, trying to launch their idea. They're going to fail. 99% of pre-seed startups fail, okay? So is this what we want as a future? Is this what we want, you know? And we have to understand that the problem is not capitalism. It's not the 1%, and it's not government, all right? That's the good news, all right? They are systemic results of the problem, okay? So if we fix the problem... We actually fix capitalism, we fix the 1%, and we fix government. Think of that, right? Fix the problem. So what is the problem? Well, it is the wolf on our back. And that wolf is an obsolete corporate model based from the 19th century. You know, you can think of it even further back. You know, the 18th century, the Industrial Revolution was probably the birthplace of the, of, of the uh, corporate model, what I call Corporation 1.0. And ultimately... It is the wolf on our back. And you can think of that as Mother Nature. You can think of that as you and I. Um, but ultimately, it is defining and is taking us down. It's taking everything down. And if we don't make the change, basically, it's going to win. All right? And we're going to lose everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. <laughs> so let's make a change. And and the simple fact is, if you understand, let's look at the corporate model here. What is the traditional corporate model? This is this obsolete, uh, you know, 19th century invention, right? The 1%, these are the VCs, the state, the institutional investors, the Silicon Valley, what I call the Angel Gate uh, folks. Um, you know, the, the, the new monarchy, right? Uh, they're the lesser stakeholders, and they control. The employees don't have any say. They are the indentured servants. They are the slaves. They are the, you know, the workers, whatever. They're enslaved by debt okay, um, to work. And uh, ultimately, this here is corporate 1.0. Now, where do you stand? as a Well, you're a greater stakeholder. You're at the base. In your opinion, you're part of the 99. doesn't matter whatsoever. So let's look at what... Our corporate 3.0, well, it inverts the, tr the the pyramid, okay? And it inverts the pyramid because basically what we, and, and the, there are the separate, you know, the function of the corporation is still there. That's why I showed those lines there. Great, but however, we include the greater stakeholder. The CEO serves at their approval. Kind of think of it as the old gladiatorial games with a thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, once every five years, you get to put a thumbs up, thumbs down for the CEO. Not only that, you can... The CEO is responsible for ensuring that his corporation is ISO 26,000 responsible. Click here, watch, learn about it. And it goes further. To greater stakeholders, to anyone, we're 100% fiscally transparent. If you can see the books, you can't bake the books, and there's going to be a lot less fraud and everything else. Let's be transparent, people. And finally, the lesser stakeholder, okay, ultimately ratifies the corporate charter changes. What does this mean? It means that the 1% can't hijack the company. That's what it means. Um, they also approve the appointment of the CEO. Again, it stops the 1% from hijacking the company. And finally, they set where the investment's going. Not, not the leadership. They set okay how much they're going to invest in their net profit. After all, it's the employees that are doing the work, right? And finally, they determine where the investments are going to go to the other open corps, which ones they like. It's that simple. So, and they all, they, and finally, they nominate and appoint the trustees. And I'm running out of time here. So, what is an open corp? Well, an open corp become, right? Or open startups become open corps. And ultimately, an open startup is one anyone can join. To learn more, watch these videos. Thanks. My name is Michael Trout. I appreciate you watching this, this presentation. Tell me what you think.